when the replay official did not stop I, the game. I'm not going to comment on that. I'll get fined for the rest of my life if I get commented on that. We had a great belief in our locker room. We didn't have to do anything special, just be us. I was so proud of this team. We had so much fun, it ought to be illegal. Any idiot can say whatever they want, and they usually do, and they're negative. And all I see, to me, I've gotten to a point now when I see things like that, I feel sorry that those people feel that way, that their lives don't have the purpose, the passion, and the excitement and the enjoyment that some of us do. Our purpose is to win, make no mistake about it, but it's to win the right way. And our goal, our stated goal, is going to be to win the Sun Belt, uh, sorry, to win the SEC East. Talk about the reception you received from the fan, fan base. Did you ever think you'd be kissing and hugging babies at the tarmac when you got off the plane? Um, a lot better than another tarmac experience that I had. <laughs> I didn't think of it. It was like, <laughs> like an anniversary or something like that. We're coming. We're coming. And we ain't backing down. I said in my press conference back in December that I didn't feel like there was anything in South Carolina that we lacked to be a championship program, that we had everything that we needed. I am even more convinced of that now after being there for seven months. Welcome in to the latest episode of That SEC Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Bratton. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter. And I'm still flying solo, Shane driving back from the deep sea fishing excursion. I have confirmed he survived the trip. I've seen plenty of videos, plenty of uh, vomiting off the side of the ship. (laughs) So we'll get the uh, the full breakdown from Cousin Shane once he's back. With or without Shane, had to do a podcast because this expansion talk some people may be getting tired of it we got updates with that that thing's moving quick as can be but before we get into that we actually do have a couple updates around the sec so wanted to dive into that and uh, now is a great time we know we've been plugging the youtube page it's just same as the pod that sec podcast just search that on youtube and it'll come up and if you tune in on youtube you can actually see some of the stuff i'm talking about because we've got Uh, Some updates here. Missouri's got some new uniforms. We got some new memes. New memes making fun of Texas and Oklahoma. So head on over to the YouTube if you haven't already. But before we get into the latest on uh, Texas and Oklahoma and the expansion and all that, let's rewind the clock a week. Shane Beamer, we touched on in here. All South Carolina fans know that man had an epic performance at SEC Media Days. And how did he cap it off? The famous Steve Spurrier photo from Arby's recreated it and sent that out. And uh, during a recent uh, Gamecock function down there in Columbia, Shane Beamer broke down the behind the scenes of uh, what what all went down with that photo. So uh, let's kick it over to Coach Beamer. How soon after you took the job did you know you wanted to recreate that Arby's picture? <laughs> um... <laughs> I didn't, uh, to be honest with you. Is that That's Justin a, King's idea? That was Justin King. That was Justin King. Give Fink credit, too. Fink was in, <laughs> on board with it as well. We were uh, we were riding back to the airport, and and uh, Justin and Steve Fink said, we need to, we, we got to do this. We're going to drive right past this Arby's that had happened the first time. We got to go in there and do it. And, and uh, we did it. And <laughs> probably the best part, it wasn't on camera. It was just the reaction of the young ladies that were working behind the counter when we rolled in. And... Mm-hmm set up the whole shop you know like that to do the picture i think there was some surprised and, and amazed faces uh from those guys from those girls watching us but it was fun to do and and uh you know we took the picture and then we were on, we were up in the air probably 15 minutes later and then when we landed it was amazing just automatically the reaction from so many people yeah. over that picture it was pretty cool all right so i figured south carolina fans would appreciate the little backstory there from shane beamer that uh, photo was classic and again, if you're on the YouTube page, you could check it out if you have, maybe you've missed it. I just thought that was too good to share. And uh, so, hey, sticking in the SEC East, got up some more news here. Missouri, if you missed it. M-I-Z! They have revealed new uniforms, and they're looking pretty sharp. And I've seen some people comment, well, they look a little bit like Iowa. That's true. But I think that's probably just the Nike influence. Uh, these are some pretty nice uniforms. Overall, they're getting thumbs up from across the SEC. One thing I have seen some criticism 
they have removed Mizzou from the front of the uniform. The numbers are bigger. I guess that was uh, the point of that, but Missouri's official Instagram account shared these photos, and then Mookie Cooper shared images of him in the new uniform. So overall, Missouri fans are really going to like these uniforms. New look for the Tigers heading into what could be a really big 2021 season. And then, hey, final thing here, again, in the SEC East. You know, there were some rumblings there that uh, Florida defensive lineman Brenton Cox, he had his uh, procedure this offseason. Is he going to be ready? He says he's good to go. He's planning to suit up week one against FAU. He told that to Pro Football Focus. So that's great news for the Gators. And, of course, he had to chive in. I don't know. He's looking. You know, these players and these coaches, they say, hey, week one, we're looking at week one. We know they're lying. And Brenton Cox showed it right here. He just wanted to make sure everybody knew he's going to be on the field in Jacksonville for that Georgia game. The former Bulldog, now Gator star, letting everybody know that uh, they're at Gatesville. They still, it's months and months away, but they got their eyes dead set on the Bulldogs. Sounds like uh, they're really, they're playing up the disrespect card there in Gainesville. So you love to see that. But all right, I've held off long enough. We got to get to the hot topic here. Texas and Oklahoma on Monday, as I said, was going to happen. They have informed the Big 12 that they're out. They plan on not sticking around past the current Big 12 TV contract, which ends in 2025. But... And that may seem like a long way out, but, you know, all indications, we've seen Brett McMurphy suggest that uh, they could be playing in the SEC, Texas and Oklahoma, that is, by uh, 2022. And now we've got Matt Hayes, been on the show Saturday Down South Insider. He has got a source in the SEC saying the expectation is for Texas and Oklahoma to play in the SEC in 2022 it doesn't do anyone any good for them to be in one conference and committed to another beyond that one year so yeah look for texas and oklahoma i mean this thing is in hyperdrive the presidents of the sec they are set to meet on thursday according to uh, ross dellinger of uh, sports illustrated meeting on thursday to vote whether to approve texas and oklahoma into the sec It takes 11 of the 14 schools to vote yes, and I promise you, it's going to be 14 to 0. The SEC is voting Texas and Oklahoma into the league on Thursday. So, my goodness, I mean, here we go. That would be officially eight days since the news leaked that these two were interested in joining the SEC to it happening. That is just incredible and that gives you a good indication of uh, how far down the road this was when this leaked and I don't care what anybody says you know all the credit in the world to Brent Zerneman up there of the Houston Chronicle nobody saw this coming I mean they could have anyone that uh, said they did I think they were just guessing because he leaked it and about half the people I knew didn't even know if it was real or not because this thing was kept so close to the vest credit the SEC credit Texas and Oklahoma, and hell, you know, the the allegation there is that Texas A&M leaked this. Brent Zerman suggests that's not the case, but uh, we'll just have to take him at his word, and he's the guy that broke the story, so I trust him over anybody else when it comes to that. But it's just hilarious because the fact that, you know, this is not even official. It feels like it's the worst-kept secret in America, yet here we got the official Ole Miss Twitter account, welcoming Texas. Well, I say welcome. They troll him. They're trolling them, welcoming them to the SEC. If you missed it, again, this is on the YouTube. So if you're checking out on YouTube, you'll get to see what I'm talking about here. But the official Ole Miss Twitter account posted two photos, one of uh, Ole Miss beating Texas and one of Ole Miss beating Oklahoma and said, hey, it just means more. Welcome to the SEC. So you got to hand it. I mean, I know Lane Kiffin's not behind this uh, Ole Miss Twitter account, but it sure looked like it there. <laughs> I just think, I mean, this is fantastic. I mean, this is giving you a good indication of 
that gives you a great indication of the, the welcome wagon that'll be out with these two get, come to the SEC. I mean, they're not going to be beloved by any means, but I just thought it was great. It just means more, as Ole Miss says, and the trolling just means more there in Oxford. So I thought that was great. I want to give credit to the Tucker Partridge, who <laughs> I said, hey, it's only 47 days. As this podcast comes out, it's actually 46 days until Arkansas beats Texas in Razorback Stadium. And he's got Houston nut with the horns down. So I thought that was great. You know, just the memes are, are rolling in right now with the news that Texas and Oklahoma are on their way to the SEC. And again, I'm telling you guys, this is going to be the best damn thing that ever happened to the SEC. It's going to be great for every team in there. I cannot wait for it. And we got one more from a uh, Texas A&M grad, Star Killer 613 If you see someone wearing a Texas A&M shirt, chances are they went to Texas A&M. If you see someone wearing a Texas University shirt, chances are they went to Walmart. <laughs> oh, so the bad blood is flowing already. I mean, this is terrific. Let's see. I can't. I cannot wait for these teams to meet on the field. It's going to be sensational. But like I said, hey, th this news is coming, and it's coming in quick. Texas and Oklahoma likely to be approved in the SEC by Thursday. Imagine that. Eight days after the news broke. Just incredible timing here. This thing's going in warp speed. And, uh, you know, I made the case. Of course, if you missed it, go check out the uh, – the way the realignment broken down for about a full 30 minutes there. Not going to go near as long on this episode of the pod, but I meant to share this when I was talking about what could be happening here once Texas and Oklahoma come to the SEC. And, you know, I threw out my four-division format there and how they should do it, the nine-game SEC schedule. Don't want to go over all that right now, but here's just one example of how great this is going to be for all of us college football fans. Once these two enter the league, I mean, look at this lineup. We're going to have Thanksgiving week, rivalry week, whatever you want to call it, end of the regular season. Of course, we're going to have the Egg Bowl, Ole Miss and Mississippi State, as is tradition. You know, we talked about that this offseason. That's been extended for a couple more years. And some of those fans not exactly thrilled now that the NFL has kind of has kind of claimed Thanksgiving to their own fully now with uh, – but – Hell, I love that game. I watch it over the NFL every single day and twice on Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? So the Egg Bowl, there's your appetizer, so to speak. The most anticipated matchup with this news of uh, expansion, Texas A&M, Texas. Imagine that SEC doubleheader on Thanksgiving. Again, my favorite game, favorite rivalry, the Egg Bowl, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Texas A&M, Texas. I mean, it just doesn't get much sweeter than that. On a, And, hell, we're, we're not even a quarter way down this list. We're getting back. I think if they do it the way I propose they're going to do it, the golden boot, Arkansas LSU, get that the following day. I mean, how sweet would that be? Maybe we'll find another way to get squeeze one of these other games on a Friday, but that's, uh, you know, that's the rivalry that uh, Arkansas fans won in that spot. I think they'll get it back because LSU, Texas A&M, is, in my opinion, unlikely to be that season finale. So you slide LSU back to Arkansas. Natural rivalry for both those teams. That's a hell of a way to head into the the weekend. The Iron Bowl, everybody knows about that. Arguably the greatest rivalry not only in college football, but in all of sports. Auburn, Alabama. Tennessee, Vanderbilt. It's a little bit more even than Cousin Shane likes to admit at this point. But hell, that, that's turned into... Uh, you know, somewhat of a rivalry here with the Tennessee struggles in recent years. Let's get to the games that we didn't get last year because of damn COVID. We had to stick to the uh, conference-only slate, Florida-Florida State. Just cannot wait for that game to return. Mike Norvell seemingly has uh, all this momentum on the recruiting trail. I'm sure that will. I'm sure that won't go anywhere when they go five and seven and lose by 42 points to Florida this year. Georgia versus Georgia Tech. Again, I know Georgia fans. Some of them not too thrilled with this uh, being a game. But, hell, them dogs deserve a little bit of a break going into potentially the SEC championship, don't they? So, you know, beat the hell out of Georgia Tech. You can rest your starters for the second half. There's nothing wrong with that. South Carolina, Clemson, 
Yeah, we missed that game. Remember, South Carolina fought the damn conference only slate because they wanted to play Clemson so bad. You think South Carolina's afraid of Clemson? They were basically the only one in the SEC that was fighting this conference only schedule because they wanted to play Clemson. They want to see him every year. They, they don't give a damn about the preseason hype with Clemson. So South Carolina Clemson, the Shane Beamer against Dabo, I mean, that's going to be great. Kentucky Louisville didn't get that game. Now that uh, Louisville's one of the worst teams in the country, Ducky Kentucky, I mean, imagine that. <laughs> that was basically the turning point for Mark Stoops. Of course, the Mississippi State game, getting that first win over an SEC West, that was probably the real turning point. But beating Louisville, and I don't think he's – he may have lost to him once since he finally beat him, but I, over Louisville the last couple of years. So beating the hell out of them, they're going to beat the hell out of them this year. Now here's the two wild cards. These are the ones that you may not get, but it would be a shame if we don't get them. And I think that we'll just bear with me here. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, the Bedlam game. I know, I'm sure Oklahoma State is going to be madder in hell that the, the Sooners are jumping ship to the SEC. And then, hey, let's not overlook this one. Missouri needs a true rival. Missouri, Kansas. They've already uh, agreed to a couple games for, in the coming season. So, you know, both sides are, are open to this. But here's the real thing before you say, well, come on, Mike. Oklahoma State and Kansas, why in the hell would they play this juggernaut of an SEC? You know, they're leaving everybody in the dust. They've destroyed, well, not officially, but may have destroyed the Big 12, probably have, because that's the key right there. I don't know what's going to happen to Oklahoma State and Kansas, and I feel sorry for their fans. I truly do. But it's not our problem. It's not the SEC's problem. And no matter where they go, whether they stay in the Big 12, which only has got eight teams, so maybe they got changes to Big 8, whether they jump to the Pac-12 or will join the Big Ten. There's speculation that Kansas is trying to get into the Big Ten. I don't think they're going to take them. But wherever the hell Kansas and Oklahoma State end up, they're going to be hurting for revenue. They're going to be hurting for season ticket sales. They are just going to be overall hurting. If Oklahoma and Missouri throw them a bone and say, here's you one game that's probably going to be a guaranteed sellout because we know you hate our guts and we've got this track record of just this great rivalry that uh, the fans deserve to see year in, year out. I mean, I think you play that card because it's a little different than some of these other rivalries like uh, Missouri and Kansas have been in recent years. I mean, Kansas has gotten by, I guess you could say, by just relying on the Big 12. And Missouri, we all know, has gone on to greener pastures in the SEC. So it's not like the SEC teams, Oklahoma and Missouri, need these games but I think fans deserve it so just imagine if we can get those two to come around again I'll go down this list this will be the final regular season in the 16 team SEC schedule Ole Miss and Mississippi State Texas A&M in Texas Arkansas LSU Alabama Auburn Tennessee Vanderbilt Florida Florida State Georgia Georgia Tech South Carolina Clemson Kentucky, Louisville, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Missouri, Kansas. My goodness. How do you not get fired up for this? I mean, <laughs> that sounds like a dream. There's not a game on that list that I'd miss. Not a single one. So, hey, I hope you guys are getting fired up as much as I am because this is coming. The SEC is going to 16 and by the end of the week, it may be official news. I don't know when they'll plan on revealing it, but I would imagine if the presidents vote on it, like I think they will, 14 to 0, this thing is happening, and it's happening quick. So get on board, because here at the end of the week, the SEC is going to be the first super conference in college football. All right, guys, so that's all I got on this one. A uh, you know, quicker pod here, but just wanted to get something out. Got to get the latest news on what the hell's going on with uh, Texas and Oklahoma and the SEC. Like I said, things are moving fast. Hell, by, by tomorrow, if I waited a day, they might already be in the SEC. So <laughs> they're going to wait till Thursday, I would imagine. But these things are moving quick. Texas and Oklahoma officially leaving the Big 12. We'll have to see how soon they make the jump to the SEC. But according, like I said, like according to Matt Hayes, according to, well, according to a source of Matt Hayes, that thing's coming in quick. So be ready. Stay tuned. On the next episode, 
We'll give you the latest on what's been going on because things are happening so dang quick. But that's going to do it for this episode. Appreciate each and every one of you. Appreciate each and every one of you for checking us out. Catch you on the next one.